right so in today's lecture we will go a little further into our discussion in uh, population ecology so by now you know that the the population size or change in population size over the time is depend on the the initial population size right when we converted that uh, proportionate mark into uh, equation then we get this r which we discussed last time and that r is the intrinsic rate of increase and when the r is sort of a maximum value right we call it as a biotic potential right so keep in mind that term biotic potential um, it's sort of a the the highest rate that the population can is now we know that the the population size change it's very much depend on the population size initially plus now there is a, another um, factor not really a factor um, something that affecting that is called the r the biotic potential that is the natural potential of that population to grow right and this kind of a growth is something unique and this growth now we know that it's depend on these parameters that the biotic potential and the size of the population and this is the type of um, growth that we are going to get if that population going to follow that growth rate given in that equation that is the growth rate um, equals r into n you know it's if that population follow that uh, um, type of um, growth we call it is as an exponential growth right how we get that exponential growth because now we know that the, when the population size is low they are increased the population increase is also very low but when the population size increase over time and that will start growing that population it's higher the number because r into n it's multiplied by r into n and that's why you get uh, this kind of a uh, exponential growth over time right so that bring us one pattern of population growth and that is called the exponential growth right exponential growth of a population now you can see here um you can see this kind of kind of a exponential growth even in elephants right and this is this data actually come from one of the experiments for the the elephants you can see it's a long term um, sort of a research right so they have done some research for long period of time based on that data they have plot this graph and it's look like exponential growth so imagine that the uh, the elephant population they are showing exponential growth now what could happen if the elephant going to have this kind of exponential growth for example the elephants in sri lanka if they have exponential growth when the population is higher they will have very high number to increase in the next years right um and then the whole forest will flooded with elephants because you know if they have going to have this exponential growth forever <clears throat> that's something likely right and if you fall if you apply this uh, concept of uh, exponential growth into a, a laboratory settings right here i have shown a laboratory experiment um considering this exponential growth how the bacteria can grow exponentially right in the the in the left side you see there is some numbers um usually the bacteria has potential 
to increase or they double their size right in, uh, in 20 minutes time right we know that they uh, binary fission or right very simply they can just break into pieces and then they form new bacteria right and every 20 times sorry every 20 minutes they're going to have double their uh, numbers you see in the like uh, initially or the at the beginning will take as a zero minutes then there's one bacteria and if you put into a, a log scale like it you see the the zero right if you take in the in the uh, the log scale zero there's only one in the next 20 minutes there will be a two that is two into the power one likewise right um after 120 minutes or after 20 hours sorry after two hours there will be 64 bacterial cells, 2 into the power 6, right? After 3 hours, 4 hours, you can imagine. After 12 hours, because this is increasing in an exponential way, following G or the growth rate equals R into N. Right? R into N and biotic potential plus the population size. You know, when the population size is higher, it multiplied by R and I'll get a very high numbers, very big numbers. And this is what's going to happen. You just need 12 hours, right? half a day, they're going to have this many numbers, two into the power 36. You, can, you can't even believe, imagine what could be the number. So if the bacteria are going to follow the same The bacteria should grow like a, um, a foot deep layer on earth, right? One foot, right? One foot deep bacteria layer should be on our earth, right? So, the, so that is some sort of an indication what this exponential growth would look like, right? One foot deep layer of bacteria in on covering whole earth just for 12 hours right so imagine how it's going to go hope uh, now you have better understanding about this what is meant by this exponential growth right so if you look at a little bit further in the exponential growth right if you um, we go a little bit further into the exponential growth, but before that, so I have rewritten the same um, um, equation that we used before, right? And this kind of an equation actually called the differential equation, right? Mm -hmm. Differential equation, d n or delta n divided by d, delta t or d n divided by d t. And that is the growth rate actually, the population growth rate equals R into N. Now you know all this, the biotic potential is the R and N is this population size, right? So this equation is very important. And this is the, the mathematical expression of the exponential growth, right? So mathematically, you can explain this exponential growth in this equation. Okay. Um, now, uh, if you look at the same thing little in a different way as well, right? Now, previously we have discussed the, when the population is uh, close for immigration and emigration, then the, the change in population size is determined by mainly from birth rate and the death rate, right? Birth rate minus death rate, that will determine the the, the the population growth rate or the change in population size determined by the the rate of birth and death right so this is very something very simple right now <clears throat> and if you use the same equation now here it's b minus d right and 
this is b b actually the the number so what is the number number of births and number of deaths here but previously we have already discussed that the the number has no much meaning because right but rather we need to give a better um, way of representing that one and that is rather than giving a number like a birth of 100 children if we say the birth is 100 individuals so 100 child it might not have any meaning right so rather than you know even in the the statistics in a country the birth and the death they are given as a rate like for 1000 people how many births how many deaths so that become a birth or death rates right and now if you know the birth and death rate right that that's for the like a per capita i, I don't know whether you have heard about this uh, term called the per capita that's a, a latin term we use for it's same as per head what is the birth rate or death rate per head a per person what is the death or um, birth rate right now usually statistics use per thousand but rather if it is per head what is the um, the rate if you know the per head birth rate and uh, per head death rate and if you multiply that letter that simple b means the per head birth rate if you multiply that by the population size then you get the the, the rate of birth for that population similarly if the the per head per individual death rate is simple d then if you multiply it by the number then you get the the the, the population or death for the whole population i think this is clear right per individual is simple b if it is for the population you just multiply it by the number number of individuals then you get the the birth rate or the death rate for that particular population right is that clear right um yes sir okay great so, so it's something simple so the same equation actually when we can uh, Right, so now the B is the per capita birth rate or the per head. Simple D is the per capita death rate. And then you multiply it by the population to get the, the population, that the birth rate for the population or the death rate for the population. Now, now previously you know that B minus D, right? Delta N divided by delta T. If you forget about the N, B minus D is R. We have written this equation before as well. Right, the R is B minus D. So still, you get the same equation if you put even in a different way. Right, um, the same thing. You you know that uh, previously we tried to multiply the proportionate mark by a constant to get this equation, and now you see there is a, a biological meaning how you get this R, right? R kine ka etra me inni ara me per capita birth rate and death rate kine ke mai. Because of that, so it, though it is sort of a mathematical thing that we put here, but it is actually uh, something biological which determined by the birth rate and death rate, right? So, so you have to imagine that there is no immigration and emigration, then the population size is determined by this simple equation, uh, R into N. I think uh, this is uh, um, very clear to you. Now, it's very clear that the population size over time or change in the population time with time, um, or we call it as the population growth is determined by R and N. Since the R is a constant, 
now i'm pretty sure that the the population size is determined by the capital n that is the population size so that's where you get the the exponential growth right so that's how you got the population size so always if the 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 r if the r is uh, zero you see now the whole this side becomes zero then there won't be any population growth right if the r is zero and multiply by a no matter in what number you multiply by so you get a zero then there won't be any population growth but if r is above zero right if the r is above zero then always we have a, a growing population right and if the r is below zero right then it's a the population will be declining phase right um right so which means if the r equals zero then there is no any population growth the the size will be same over the time right i think this is now clear if it is r is equal zero then there, there won't be any population growth the population will be same over the time right and and that's how the population usually grow right now <clears throat> if you can use this uh, equation for a real time for a population for example um, we'll say there is some uh, group of butterflies in a garden where the first year they have the population size is 1000 then the next year or the year after the population size is 1500 now using this equation delta n divided by delta t equals r into n you should be able to calculate the r you know you know the delta n you know the delta t you know the the now the present population size is known then you will be easily calculate this r right so using a simple this kind of a uh, experimental or data collection you can calculate the r for that particular population right so i will give you a, a minute right one minute you you can um, calculate the r for this population now the n2 is the year after population is the n2 n1 is the this year population size delta t is uh, you know this one year after is this population you know then the what is a t here n is the the present population that that means the year after what is the population sorry initial population right um, so um, now you have to calculate the the what would be the r for this population i'll give you one minute you will give you try and give me your answer for this question what is the r for this population right so i hope you get the the idea right um, you can easily calculate this r value for a particular population by taking the population size over time but you know doing a, a single experiment like this for a population it's not going to work but uh, for same species you can do it for a couple of years and selecting different population from different places and you can easily calculate r for that population and right? then you know what is the natural rate of their increase or natural potential for them to increase the r value right so uh, but something that you can do right right the <clears throat> now here we have to delete the uh we'll create
okay um, and now you see here in some example populations the r values right for a population where there is no growth then there they will have r equal 0 and it look like here you know this is the time scale and this is the population size in the x axis or y axis the x axis is the time and r0 if the r is 0 0.2 0 0.02 right they have a little bit low rate but still it's increasing if the r is 0 0.06 they will have this kind of a growth rate but if the R is minus value, then they will have a reduced or decreased population size growth rate. That means over the time, the numbers will go down. Right? So you see now for a, a, someone who do conservation or wildlife manager or conservationist, they have to do this kind of studies, calculating the R. You know, if you can calculate this R, how it change over time? Though it is the R can be a, a, a you know it is intrinsic or some natural property of that population, but this can change over time, right? And that's if you can monitor this R value for a long period of time, then you can decide whether this what is going to happen to this population over time, whether they are going to be um, reduced in the future or whether they are going to increase in the number, right? So these numbers are very important. Uh, for species for conservation as well as if it is uh, for something like an invasive species. So the other way, the population size will increase substantially where you have to monitor their size as well, right? So R is something very important for biologist conservation it or even for like a manager dealing with wildlife or even invasive species, right? Right. <clears throat> now, this is, I think, you're very clear how the population size determine over time. Now, now in this way, you can calculate R and N or whatever the um, parameter, whatever the thing that you want to calculate. But if you want to know, you know, the, the first year, I mean, the initial year population size, you know, maybe after five years, you know what is the population size. Or after 10 years, you might know their population size. But if you wanted to know or calculate, because you, you do experiment, every five you take, you take the counts. But how about the previous years, like in between the zero and or the five, if you want to calculate the, you don't know, but if you want to calculate the, after two years, three years, four years, what is what could have been the population size? Then you have to change its equation a little bit, right? You have to change that equation a little bit, something like this, right? Uh, the same equation, right? Growth rate or the delta n divided by delta t equals r into n. Now you see the same equation is rewritten here. Right, and this equation we call actually previously we call it as a differential equation. Now, this is the integral equation, actually, same thing, but it is written in different format for like a, to be integral. So, if you have done biomathematics in your first year, you know how to do this one, but this is a little bit complicated for someone not familiar with mathematics, but just forget about that how this come from, but it's same equation, but you written in a uh, integral way. And this nt means the number at any given time, right? N zero is the, the initial or at the beginning, what is the population size? E is the natural log, right? I think you have known this one, 2.71 something, that's the natural log. R is the again still the same R that biotic potential and the T is the, uh, the the time period that has been studied. Right. So if you know these things, you can right um, make a plot. 
and in the right side i have given how they written this or rearranged this equation to come into this uh, equation uh, integral equation so just forget about that uh, totally uh, you just need to that integral equation is this one and why we use this integral equation is then we can like make a plot or even a table what would the population size in between like any given time you can calculate the population size what would be the population size right like that can even you can use for predict prediction for the future right? you know only for first 10 years you have data and if you want to know what going to happen for after 20 years or 25 years then you can use this equation now the equation um, the same equation actually n t equals n zero is the natural log into r into the power r multiplied by t and this equation actually we can rewrite taking the since log either side we can take the log but in this case since it is a natural log for the ln we multiply this both side by the the natural log now the nt multiplied by the natural log that become ln nt equals n0 now because we have taken the the natural log then the e is gone then you get a plus sign here plus r into t and that's how you get this equal equation actually if you take the natural log either side of the equation and you get this equation ln e nt equals n0 plus r into t right and again if it is too much for you just forget about that for a biologist but you just need to know the concept what we need here is now it is look like a usual uh, equation for a, a graph right now you can plot a graph something like y equals you know usually we do use mx plus c but in this case the plus c is in the front here therefore that y equals c plus mx the same right you can either you can bring this n zero the other side then it become y equals mx plus c right now if you have some data you can make a plot a graph and for any year, you can calculate what could be the, the population size for a particular year. So, right, uh, what the data you have is the initial population size, and then maybe after two years or five years or 10 years, whatever the data set, but single data set not going to work. Every, we say every two years you calculate, or every five years calculate. If you have that data, then you can calculate you can get the r from the the from the graph and n0 that's the initial population size you can determine from the c here and other things you know right so for a conservationist or whoever the wildlife managers this information are very important i'm not too sure the the our wildlife managers how much do they use this kind of equation or this data for the conservation of animals right it's very rare i think but uh, if you are really interested in wildlife management and then you actually you have to consider these things if you have this data for the the wild species it's much much easier for the the ecologists or the managers to work with these things this number is very important right okay um i hope you get some idea from this one i will um if you have any doubt uh, we can discuss later and later on as well right now this term biotic potential is i think you get some idea it is though it is you know we get that r from a, a mathematical equation um, but uh, but by now we know that it is something to deal with the the birth rate and death rates, which is some natural phenomenon. And 
and it is called the intrinsic rate of natural rainfall. So the natural potential that population has to increase, right? So it's natural property, right? So, um, so that is the how the populations can increase over time, right? That increase can be even reduce reduction or the decrease actually, right? And in the next table, you can see the R values for some uh, and some groups of animals, for a large mammals, birds, and small mammals. You see, the larger, in particular, the mammals, birds, and small mammals, they have a very small R values, which means their growth rates are, I mean, the population growth, right? Again, don't get confused. This is not, uh, we are talking about the individual growth, but the population growth. Right. The population growth is very low in large mammals, birds, and even the small mammals. When when you go to the invertebrates and even the lower order uh, organisms, they are, the R values are very high. You can see the protozoans. And when it comes to the bacteria, the R can be 3,000 or even up to 20,000. Right, so you can imagine how quick they can grow, how can increase their numbers, right? Um, so you, you can take an example, the viruses, but usually we don't calculate this for viruses, but if you can calculate for the viruses, you get may have perhaps 100,000 or even very high. So that is the problem we have this, even with the COVID-19, uh, they have very high R values, um, so that's why they are, where, that's where they can increase their numbers quite um, um, short period of time. Right. <clears throat> so that is the the R biotic potential. Now, I'm not too sure about the the whether you have. Um, in your advanced level, I don't know whether you, um, when you're studying the environmental science, there was a course on environmental science in the advanced level. In there, we studied something called R's, R strategies and K strategies. I'm not too sure whether you have learned this one in your advanced level, but if you don't, that's fine. But when we were doing the advanced level, we studied this something called all strategies and K strategies. And it was in our lessons and we had no any clue how this R and K came from because, but we know the, the list of features of our selection of our strategies animal, right? In that lesson, they divided the, the the animal populations into like R strategies and K strategies. I'll come to the K later on. And there, um, in the, we were taught the R strategies, they have this kind of a characteristics, right? The, they are, have short lifespan. They, are, they reproduce early in their life. I mean, as even the, I mean, just after the young age, they can reproduce, not like uh, people. Or human, they produce many offsprings, or the clutch size, or the for a given time how many offspring they can produce, and they small in size. The body size is smaller, right? And little or no parental care. I mean, maybe right after their birth, they will be alone, without any protection from the parent, right? And some examples are these, right? And actually we studied these R strategies and, and even they, there was exams sometimes asking and that we had no any clue what is this R mean, but by now you know this R is the biotic potential, right? By that time, we didn't know anything about the biotic potential, which is that was not in the A-level syllabus. Until I started, even not during the study time, actually only after the, I started teaching ecology only. I knew that this R is something to this biotic potential. That's how the R came from, right? And which I had no any clue when I did my advanced level. 
or even at the university first year. I didn't know actually what this R meant. At least it's that the same R we were taught in the advanced level, right? Right, so R strategies are the, the organisms um, have some unique, uh, this kind of uh, features, right? Um, now, the, right. So if the animal is going to follow this um, exponential growth, right? The, the whole world will be flooded with animals because everyone going to the double or even increase their numbers quite short period of time. But now we have to decide is something practical, this something called the, the exponential growth. Can this happen? What will happen to the, the animals? Like if the, the elephant or the or rabbits, what will happen if the rabbits going to have an, an exponential growth in a forest? They will start eating the grasses or whatever the plants. Right? And then if, when the number is going to be double, triple, or 10 times, 100 times, right? there won't be any plant left in the forest. Right? Then the other animals won't have any food. And even the, the rabbits, they won't have enough food and then they start dying. And the other animals also start dying because they won't have any food as well. Right? So, this exponential growth concept is not something practical. It's not going to happen in the, anim the animal world. Now, in what determine, right? If the exponential growth is not something practical, then what determine the animal's population? Is there any limit? Right? Or otherwise, um, can animal have this exponential growth forever? Or is there any limit? Right, and if there is a limit, what determine this limit, right? And 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 how this is important for like you know biologists or wildlife management. So this is very important uh, uh, thing that we need to discuss, right? Um, and very few organisms. Uh, there is a small video um, in this uh, session since we have very few minutes left. I will I won't play it now, but. Uh, it's already uploaded in the LMS and then perhaps I can play it in the next week. Yes. Now, <clears throat> um, there is another concept, right? Um, indeed, there is a limit for a population. Um, they're not going to have this exponential growth forever. There is a limit and that limit is actually coming from the environment because the environment has limited resources, right? So environment will support for that limited number, right? If the number is going to above, going to go over that limit, so something will happen and will reduce the number, right? So that's something, the resistance that the environment has is actually coming from a term called carrying capacity. The carrying capacity is the, the, the environment's ability to support a particular population, right? So if that population is going to go over that carrying capacity, so natural selection or some sort of a phenomenon will come and then stop their growth. Right, so elephants or rabbits or any animal, there will be a, um, something affecting their growth and they're going to start dying. Now, now this due to the COVID situation and the COVID virus, you see this might have definitely shown this exponential growth. And you might have seen these peaks, you know, and there will be a time there will be a peak. And after peak, there is a, a decline in their population and thereafter you get another variant a different variant and you get another peak again and there will be another factor affecting their increase as well then they, they are, the number decrease again and the next time you get another a different variant and there they will have a peak 
you see even this covid virus they are also under this uh, the phenomenon something called the carrying capacity right um there is some resistance anyway from the environment for any species to survive or to increase their numbers right so same concept will apply even for human right though we think that we can increase the population size i mean human population forever which is now exponential i will show later but uh, i'm pretty sure i mean we are now experienced that the world the, there is a huge issues that the population size we are already having above this green capacity and there are many natural as well as some artificial or human induced many reasons limiting the population size right so in the next lectures we will discuss a little bit further on this uh, green capacity as well as the, the human population difference right so that's the old time all the time we have for the today um and in the next week we will talk a little bit on this um, the the carrying capacity as well that different type of a uh, growth pattern of populations when we meet again in next week okay so that's all for the day and we will meet again in next week thank you thank you